Hello everyone. I am Shekhar from Momentum Lab, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about a special report, which gets published every year by S&P. S&P is the largest index uh, provider across the world, and uh, they do this report across different countries. Now, this report is titled as Spiva India Scorecard. You can get the a PDF version of this report if you type uh, the keyword Spiva India Scorecard in the Google search, and you will be able to download this report. what essentially this report talks about is how are the active funds performing as compared to the benchmarks so this is a very critical report for uh, many of the mutual fund investors for anyone who's investing in the equities to know how their active fund managers are doing maybe it doesn't cover specifically about which fund is doing uh, which scheme is doing better but it gives a sense of the overall industry how is it doing so the results are categorized into five uh, different categories uh, three in equities and two in bonds we will not touch upon bonds we will cover only in equities in equities they cover the large cap the mid small cap and the elss so we'll see among these three categories how have the active fund managers uh, performed in the last one year so let me share my screen so the first thing that Uh, is presented is the percentage of underperformance so in the last one year what percentage of active funds have underperformed the benchmark so that is what is represented by each of these bar so they not just take the last one year but also the last 3 years last 5 years and last 10 years you can say if if it were only last one or three year it might be an aberration or luck played a factor but actually if you see for last 5 and 10 years that's where the results get interesting you see that the bars actually are the longest when you take for 5 and 10 years it is the same for elss same for mid small cap equity and similar for large cap it might be counterintuitive when people say that uh, over a period of time things normalize or stabilize but in this case it seems that if you are sticking with an active fund manager the odds are that you end up underperforming and the odds of underperforming are high especially if you are with active funds so one year outperformance might seem like an aberration so in the last one year the elss funds performed better meaning uh, how do we read this we see 45 meaning 55 percentage of the elss funds in the last one year have done better than the benchmark whereas 45 percent of the elss or tax saving funds underperformed the benchmark in the last one year 60 percent of the large cap funds have uh, underperformed than the benchmark only 40 percent have overperformed the benchmark Whereas in case of mid small cap equity, fifty four fifty four percent of the mutual funds have underperformed the benchmark, and forty six percent have overperformed. So if you take a look at uh, the five years in, in large cap, it is ninety three percent, meaning only seven percent handful of mutual funds have beaten the benchmark. The same is the case if you see for ELSS in ten year or uh, uh, equity mid small cap. These are hovering around nineties. it's an alarmingly high number only few uh, funds end up generating more returns than the benchmark even let's say if you're thinking that it is a phenomena of only 2024 no you actually go and and check for snp spiva scorecards for different years let's say i did the same thing for uh, 2023 the pattern remained the same the last one year was an aberration but if you see the last 5 10 years the numbers are above 70% so you can do this exercise like 2024 23 22 and you go back and see for the longer period terms like 5 and 10 years it is never less than 70% the underperformance yeah maybe if snp does give it in one report it would have been better like if they can take an average rolling returns and show that uh, how are they doing it across so that it becomes much simpler but the story remains the same that the active funds have underperformed the benchmark now we have known that it is known fact that uh, the number of funds 
beating the benchmark is less but let's also see what quantum of difference are they underperforming if let's say they are just underperforming by 0.1% or 0.01% doesn't matter anything but if it is a bigger number then that is a serious concern so let's see by what quantum are they underperforming so they have provided that as well in this uh, report i don't think this was available last time so you can see this in here so this is for only last one year the excess returns for each category against the benchmark so if you take the large cap how do you read this the top 25 percentile top 25 percentile mutual funds have beaten the benchmark by let's say around 4 percent or more the bottom 25 percentile uh, mutual funds have underperformed by 2 percent and the median 50th percentile have more or less stayed the same as the benchmark so it's good in the large cap space actually the underperformance is less whereas the ones which are overperforming are doing it by a decent margin now if you see the ELSS it is even better in ELSS uh, the 25th percentile bottom 25th percentile is at zero meaning uh, the, the mutual funds uh, 25th percentile and below are getting the same results as that of benchmark whereas for uh, the top 25th percentile they are handsomely beating by more than 7%. The median 50th percentile is somewhere around 4%. Now let's take a look at the mid-small cap. In mid-small cap, the worst performers or the bottom 25th percentile, they are underperforming by 10%. The best top 25th percentile, they are just same as the benchmark. The median is somewhere around minus 5% underperformance. So even in terms of different categories, the underperformance is varying by a different huge margin. In, in terms of mid-small cap, you have to be actually more conscious of the kind of fund managers or funds that you have to pick. In case of ELSS or large cap, it doesn't matter more or less. At some point of time, they all uh, stabilize or normalize at one values. But whereas the selection of uh, mutual funds in the mid-small cap is even more pronounced because we have seen that over a longer period of time, they underperform benchmark. And the quantum of underperformance also can vary hugely between the funds. Now, this is only for one year. Let's see what is the uh, scenario for a longer period, one, three, five, seven. So they have given that information, but in a table of format like this. Yeah, quartile break points of fund performance. Let's say the in one year large equity large cap. The third quartile was at 21.82, meaning the bottom 25th percentile. The 50th percentile or median was at 23.15, whereas the top 25 or 75th percentile was at 26.73. For three years, these are the annualized numbers, 15.26, 16.45, 17.48, and so on and so forth for different categories. Now, to make it visu uh, visually uh, easy to understand, I've just plotted this in a... Uh, in this fashion so that it is legible for our viewers. So these are the three categories, large cap, ELSS and mid small cap. One thing that you can definitely notice is that uh, the returns for equity, mid and large cap vary by a huge margin. It is somewhere between 15 to 32%. That's overall period. But if you take a look at uh, the one, five, uh, one, three and five years, there's a huge uh, difference or dispersion in the returns uh, especially in the equity mid large cap space whereas if you see in the ELSS or in the equity large the dispersion between the different funds is not that much that is the first insight the second insight is that if you take a look at a longer term like 10 years the cap actually gets narrowed for large cap for ELSS it does get narrowed relatively as, uh, in the mid small cap space as well when you compare it with uh, in the same category for 1 3 and 5 but still the gap is also huge the, it it varies anywhere between 15% to 18% annualized for 10 years i'm talking about even a 3% difference uh, over a period of 10 years is uh, very huge whereas in case of elss or equity it is hardly 1 or 1 1.25% difference between the bottom 25th and the top 25th 
even 1% cagr difference for 10 years makes it a massive difference but uh, still better than uh, the equities uh, equity funds in uh, mid small cap so mid small cap choosing the fund manager plays an absolutely essential role in uh, in the return outcome so they've also done one more interesting analysis on which sectors did well in 2024 so what they did here was they compared the performance of these sectors in 2023 and how did they do in 2024 nothing new here we all are aware about the factor called as momentum the sectors which continue to do well they continue to do well even further so so that's what momentum says and is also being represented here so on the x axis you see the percentage of the excess returns in 2023 versus the percentage of excess returns in 2024 so it means that if in 2023 uh, sectors like let's say industrials or consumer discretionary or real estate they overperformed in the range of 20 to 30% they seem to have again overperformed even in 2024 so that's the reading of uh, this chart and same is the case with underperformance the sectors which underperformed in 2023 remained to be underperformers in 2024 so nothing new for us uh, as the momentum practitioners in terms of this analysis now having said that i would like to uh, conclude this uh, video with couple of points one uh, we have seen that yes the active fund managers have underperformed the benchmarks second the underperformance uh, in terms of the quantum is also pronounced and the dispersion is more especially in the mid small cap space so that's the second point the third point while we are looking at the uh, uh, active managers underperformance all good uh, it doesn't mean that we go ahead and invest directly in passives and be happy with it because there are some limitations and constraints uh, we should also be talking about that this report because each publisher of a report has have their own biases snp also would be having their own bias because if their indices are in wide circulation and tracking it everyone is benchmarking against it that's how their business would grow so let's see what they have omitted and uh, let's try to play a devils uh, devils advocate and see the cons of it the one con that i definitely see is that they are only indexing or concentrating on the excess returns over and above the benchmark but they're not taking into consideration the second aspect of investing which is how are they able to handle the volatility so you're only comparing against one metric returns you're not comparing against the other metric which is the standard deviation or volatility so let's say even if the active fund manager is underperforming or matching the returns of the benchmark with let's say half the volatility or 3/4 the volatility of the benchmark still i would say at least in my opinion he has done a good job because that's what as an individual or retail investor we would be looking at we would be looking at a smoother path so that we don't have have to go through these knee-jerk volatile phases during our investing journey and we are sticking to any one particular asset and continue to ride the longer term so omitting the volatility is a key miss and i'm sure they also are aware of it and they've consciously avoided to do that but let's also try to do that maybe at least i from our side we'll try to pick some of the important large cap or elss and mid small cap funds and compare against the benchmarks and see how is how are they performing against volatility returns and then the sharpe ratio let's see that what ca- comes out that's one point on uh, omitting volatility that i don't like in this report second thing is not all benchmarks have a good replicating indices or index funds launched that's the recent phenomena that we are seeing right now especially after 2022 that a flurry of indices have been launched uh, factor indices sectoral indices all have have come up in the last 2 3 years but what if for, what for the investor who has been investing in the last 5 7 10 12 years they didn't have such a large uh, number of indices back then to invest or track so all they had was couple of active funds and then stick with those and that's absolutely fine because you take a decision on whatever available of information is present at that point of time so that's the hindsight bias you can't go back and say you had i invested in benchmark i would have been better because you didn't have the benchmark back then so that is second thing 
third even let's say now now at least now we have the benchmarks still it doesn't mean that we go ahead and jump into the passives because we have to see how many of these benchmarks are uh, actually investable what is the tracking error what is the tracking difference are they varying hugely the benchmark says a number whereas when you invest in index fund the tracking error is uh, is uh, quite high and you actually can't replicate the same kind of returns leave about the uh, expense ratio i'm not talking about that if you add expense ratio on top of the tracking error it would have been a different ball game then the comparison actually makes apple to apple comparison but nevertheless the numbers of 70 90% of underperformance is pretty bad in terms of the active uh, fund management space so keep uh, keep watching we'll try to do these analysis maybe if not at the scale of snp index we'll try our best to see uh, on including all these three parameters in terms of expense ratio the volatility and the tracking error uh, how many active funds are doing better than the benchmarks thanks a lot have a nice day guys bye